Welcome to the narrow boat that James built. I hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. Well, this is part two of the kitchen install. Uh, this is how it's been left. Um, I'm pretty happy with how they've kind of, how they're positioned. What I've got to do now is take this one out and I've got to make a cutaway in the base to enable me to access the floor plan, the, the floor access panel. Um, it should be quite straightforward. The only thing I'm hoping is I don't have to cut away any of the supporting upright. So I'm hoping if I do it in two sections, uh, I know there's a lot of using the word hoping here, but if I do it in two sections, I might be able to lift the little piece up and slide it underneath the base of the unit. And then I'll hopefully, better act, again, using that word, access all the ballast or the area. At the moment, there's no ballast in there. I've taken it all out to for the trimming. Um, so right, that's what I'm gonna do first, is take this out and then do that. Right, now I've got to attach the feet onto the bottom of this unit here. These feet are 50s, the unit's base is 12, and the worktop that I've just bought is 38. Uh, so in total there's 100, the height of that's 80, so therefore we're gonna be at, a, at 900, which is the standard height you'd want for a kitchen worktop. So I'm just going to put these through. Now these are going to protrude from here about 50, well exactly 50 mil. The reason for that is there's gap at the back of the unit, which I knew there was going to be, and I might choose to put a plinth down there to cover it up, um, just to make it a bit more usable. This cutaway here has been made for access to the floor panel for the ballast. It doesn't look very pretty, granted, but it works. That's all that matters. I take the panel up, I slide it underneath. So I've got to be mindful of that with these battens here because it slides, so I can't put a batten there, for example. Um, and yeah, and it works. So I can get my hand in, I can access all the, all the bilge. So that's the important part there. Right, so the feet are in on this unit. Uh, you'll see I've got one, two, and three. Um, I've marked out the lines on this side here. The lines of the battens, you can just faintly see there. So when I screw the whole lot down into the floor, I know exactly where I'm screwing. So I've got some super duper long screws and they're gonna go all the way through. Um, I'm gonna put, offer it up now and make sure it all kind of sits in nice and true. But it's, uh, yeah, it's taking shape. So. I had to put in the tower first because now it's kind of all working around this way. When I was building it, I started here and kind of worked my way back around there to work out the dimensions of the tower. Now I'm fitting it. I've started with the tower and I'm working my way around this way for some reason. It just seems to be the way it's flowing, but it's going all right so far. Okay, so now this end, sorry, this long piece here is now in position. So the floor feet have had two extra screws put in them so these long ones here are going into the ground into the uh, subfloor and obviously these are just holding it all in place but it's nice and secure that's nice and rigid it's all true and flat um, it's upright so kind of as good as I'm gonna get it to be honest with you obviously the cutaways work well for the bilge area. I'll see if I can do it one handed and show you what I've got to do. Basically I lift it up and I slide it across there and then I'm in. So I will finesse, finesse that but to be honest for the moment it works and I didn't have to cut away any of the supporting upright which is good because no doubt I'm gonna have to cut away some of it anyway to provide a housing for the sink. But Will says the sink, there are two sinks, so I'm hoping that one can sit in that bit there and one over here. And not that I've worked this, well, I've kind of, until it's in, I just can't work it out. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have enough room. So from right to the edge there of the wall, to the edge of the unit, or actually when it's pushed in place, is, is 530. So if I get a, well I've got a 600 counter, if I take off 
70 and have it at 530 or sticking out a little bit and then cut away a bit there maybe I'm gonna have to work that out and then am I gonna go for a mitre across there at 45 degrees and then the rest of it to come out onto this one or do I go all along to there and butt end it and have a nice longer piece here this is the piece here where the gas hobs are going to be so the next step now is for me to fit the work surface up on here um, what I'm trying to do is I've, I've trimmed it down to 550 and what I'd like is obviously it's a rounded work surface what I'd like is for there to be a little lip it's going to stick proud of this upright here but I'm not too bothered about that what I just like is a nice lip extending from here which means I need a cutaway along there which I've just been to the workshop and done the cutaway so I'm just going to trim it now so now I'll offer it up perfect that fits nice in line with that that's really good now it's sitting true on all the walls which is great uh, it's bang up in line with that I'll leave it on there for a sec um, right yeah and now I actually get a feel for it for the first time yeah that's fine that's really good. I might have to have my electrics in this area here, not above the oven, like some people have uh, commented on the last video, but certainly enough room for the sink there. And I reckon if it was in set and down there, that's actually quite nice. And you know what? I'm actually thinking whether the wall, no, because the wall come down to about there. So I think, yeah, that'll work well. Now I've got a piece which comes out here. It's less of a U shape, more of a return, I would say, because it's only gonna come out about 35, 40 centimeters there. I'm still kind of making it up as I go along. But that's, uh, yeah, it's fitting together nicely now. Right, so that's what it's looking like at the moment with the side piece in as well although it's not in properly it's overhanging way too much on this side that needs to be flush and here you'll see there where it lips down obviously that's not quite level yet where it lips across i'm going to want that edge taking off so i've got a straight edge against a straight edge and then i've got one of these which clips over it will be this edge here which we cut so that will then clip over there and basically call, form a nice seam can't, can't really see it at the moment but I'm happy with that that's really good I like the proportions I'm okay with that sticking out as far as it is the only thing I'm considering is whether this unit here needs to be bought out a little bit further. So essentially it therefore reduces that gap. That bit doesn't move. This bit just moves out a little bit. One of the main considerations for me when working out the position of this work surface, because I've got quite a bit of play because it can come out anywhere in this gap here, because that's all going to be hidden. So I've got a bit of play here. Um, and again, with the unit underneath. So one of the considerations are the hobs so this is a christmas present from mar and park thank you very much picked it up today at midland chandler's 
and this is the Thetford 330 series with a black glass lid and it is recessed into the worktop so it should look pretty smart. There's an all black one that they've just bought out, but um, it's got a much broader frame. And as you know, I haven't got much room to play with because this is no longer 600, this is 550. So, let me introduce to you. Fit this latest range of hogs. Actually, I'll leave that under there, I don't want to scratch. You lift that up and there are the burners there in stainless steel so three burners two 1.5s and one 2.5 and the idea is that sits that sits flush and uh well you know kind of as flush as it can so now let's just offer that up for size oh okay oh that's a lot better than i thought okay so I think that unit will have to come out a bit because obviously it can't, you know, that, that upright's going to get in the way. That's all right. It's still got some room to play with. Or I keep it in that position and leave it like that, which means when that's up, well, you can't really see me, but it's going to be set down further. But that provides the splashback when you're cooking. But, you know, 95% of the time when it's not being used, it's down. Although, the only thing is, is the kettle. On board a narrow boat, you only boil water on a kettle, um, a hob-mounted kettle. So that means, given the sheer volume of tea I drink, that this is going to be open all the time. That's the only um, consideration I have. I could mount it that way, which is something I have considered. It just fits. But I don't know how weird that would look. Actually, it gives you quite a lot of room to cook here. This is quite spacious. And then you can be doing the washing up and still kind of faffing around on it. So I'm not, I haven't made up my mind. That might still happen. That just, just fits in. But either which way. That is a uh, very nice bit of kit. Well, I'm really happy with this work surface from Wix. It's got a really good laminate to it. So it's got, it hasn't scratched at all and it's not going to, it's got a nice kind of sheen to it. So yeah, I'm delighted with that. Um, the reason I've gone for the butt joint over, over the mitre is purely down to the fact that there's less of a seam and these seams are weaknesses. So the smaller the weakness, the better. I've got that edging strip. I'm gonna put that on. Uh, you're meant to use the joining strip, but I'm using an edging strip and just trying to cut it well um, and that'll tuck in there nicely. The hobs I'm gonna cut this way and so it's facing this way. It's a much better, it's much better if I'm here cooking that's much nicer and then when the lid is up which is going to be up all the time for tea it means it doesn't have that shield there it's just going to be a line going up there which you're not really going to be able to see because it's going to be in line with the flu so that works out really well delighted with that um, it all fits in nicely perfect line across there so yeah that's really good I'm going to cut a template for this uh, to make sure I get it right so I've got an off cut that's going to make sure that I kind of get it right and it held its own weight. Let's go and pick up the sinks and give them a go and some tiles for the hearth. Um, and when I made my tea, I spilled some water and it just pulled here on the on the surface. It didn't dribble down or anything like that. So that's, good. that's a really good sign. So I was delighted about that. Right, part three is probably gonna be the, uh, the hobs going in. So you'll have to join me then. Until next time, take care, bye bye.